Hi y'all, Kraken Latte here. So, here we are. You've read the title, we're at the stage that usually turns folks away from making or sustaining an alt army. The upkeep. This is the part that comes after you've done everything in the previous five parts of this series. This is the part that can be a real turnoff. But don't get discouraged. Remember what I talked about in part one about taking note of what you even want these alts for? That completely affects this step. In fact, it's not really a step at all because it's ever evolving. So let's look into what you may or may not need to do to maintain your alts. So there's many little things that come to mind with upkeep, but I'm going to discuss the three things that will affect you most. Gear, zone access, and expansion system hubs. Okay, gear. I'm sure every one of you has a totally different level of tolerance, experiences, ideas, and goals for this word. So why don't we put those aside for now and look at this with the mindset of practicality. I've divided this category into two levels for you, competitive and non-competitive. We could also call that second one casual, but I'd argue that you could be quite hardcore while not being a competitive player. Anyways, competitive includes raiding, mythic plus, and PvP. These are sources of gear, yes, but they're also scenarios in which you need progressively higher gear to perform. For this category, you'll be taking your alt army through any of these, and then outfitting them with what you can get your hands on. Usually, this is so you can get into increasingly challenging content. You may be doing this on a good handful of your alts, but remember it doesn't have to be all of them. You choose which ones you're playing competitively with, and that will dictate who you get geared. If that isn't your thing, don't stress it. That's why we have the non-competitive category. I define this as the comfortably able to solo world content level of gear. If you're not going to play competitive with your alts, then there's no reason to chase down that high level gear for all of them, unless you're into that. In this case, your main gear sources are from world quests, professions, catch-up system gear, or whatever the current character hub gear set is. And by that last one, I mean like covenant sets for an example, which are pretty sweet for fresh alts. Catch-up gear is often introduced in later patches like the point twos and threes, which is the stuff you'll see on a vendor or from rares that is decent item level for that patch. Benthic gear from Najatar, bought for pearls, which was also bind on account gear, is a prime example. Time walking or the dungeon events are also pretty good sources for both categories, so those are good to keep an eye on the calendar for. So now we've got the gearing to find and the main sources located, but how do you really know which one you need to do? Well, that's simple. What content are you planning to use these alts for? Do you want to raid, PvP, or do Mythic Plus? Then get the competitive gear. That's the only place you really need it. If you just plan to farm herbs or skins, old raids, world quests, rares, etc., then you really only need whatever the highest level current world quests or catch-up gear is. In this case, the catch-up gear is really the best of those two, but again, that comes in later patches. Now, you might be squirming in your seat because you've had it drilled into your head that the only way to gear is with raid gear. But answer yourself this. Do you really want to fully raid gear your entire alt army? All of them? No, no, no. You'll go mad with burnout, trust me. If you really want to gear out one to satisfy that itch, then just gear your main. They're not an alt anyway, so this rule doesn't apply to them. Remember, practicality. You just need enough gear on your alts to comfortably do whatever content you're using them for. You don't need to be armored to the teeth to go fight Ragnaros anymore, okay? Alright, so that's gear. The other two points take a lot less explaining. Let's start with zone access. This is exactly what it sounds like. Whatever content is preventing your alt from going into a zone and accessing that zone's content. Some are easy and have skips. Some suck hard and don't. I have three examples for you and I'll unironically name them the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good example, the broken shore in Legion. Once you've done that intro on at least one character, you can skip the entire thing just by telling Khadgar you've done it at the very beginning. Literally nothing more to do here. You poof into the broken shore hub and now you can quest there or whatever you want. Yay for account-wide unlocks! 
the bad example, the Colturus and Zandalar intros. These are what I call half-ass skips, to put it bluntly. The majority of the original intro content is skippable. Just talk to Jaina or Nathanos after their little setup and skip the scenarios. Poof, you're there in the zones, but you're not done. You still have to tour the place and get acquainted with it, and then talk to whoever or whatever even though you've done this a gazillion times. Unless you're an allied race, of course. It's not hard, but it gets old and adds up if you have a lot of alts. Okay, now for the ugly example. Najatar in BFA. This zone unlock takes 20 to 30 minutes, and you will have to do it on every single alt. I just did one to get the new footage for this video, and yeah, still no skip. Do you know how many times I have done this intro on alts? Do you know how badly I want to barf out my own lungs? Yeah, very, very ugly example. Now I'm sure you're like, why the heck in heck would you do Najatar at all your alts? Well, for the same reason I play the game. Collectibles. There are rare mounts, pets, mog, and a lot more that come from that zone, which you can't access without the intro. This goes for any zone that need unlocks. Mechagon and Argus are also prime examples, though they don't have ugly intros like Najatar. If collecting is your main reason for the alt army, then you will want to access all the zones so you can get as many chances in as possible. But of course, that's for you to decide. Alright, now for the final topic. Expansion system hubs. And what do I mean by this? Well, I mean whatever the main system city-like mechanic that expansion is based around. Garrisons for warlords, class halls for legions, and covenants for shadowlands are all good examples. There are more, of course. Now, I want you to look at this not as hurdles or points of pain, but important content that gives you benefits for getting it all set up. And once it's set up, it's done. You can't demolish your garrison, it's there forever. So you don't have to worry about those things decaying over time. Of course, this means you do need to do them on each alt. How much or how little is your call, but in all cases, the more you put in, the more you get out. Here's a prime example. Shadowlands Covenants. If you spend some time whizzing through the campaign, which is not required, you get a complete set of armor and get to pick a weapon at the end. Bam, a free set for your scrawby, probably quest-geared alt. And guess what? That gear is upgradable too. Plus, it looks pretty great. Nifty, right? So, those are the three main points of upkeep I feel are most going to affect your alts. Now, here's what I recommend you do with all this information I just threw at you. Make list of what you need to do for each alt. Make a gear list so you can check off when they're done and set a consistent item level or a slot goal for each one. Make a zone access list of what they need to unlock, as well as expansion hubs. Sunsong Ranch, Isle of Thunder, Garrisons, Tanan, Legion Class Halls, Argus Broken Shore, Shadowlands Covenants, uh... Bajir is another one I think still requires an intro. There's a healthy list here and a more I'm sure that I'm not remembering. So if you want me to make a video on that list, let me know and I can add it to my... list. Ha. Ah. In the case of Covenants, since you have four choices, I'd even make a choice in advance and note down on what Covenant each alt is going with. This will help you both now and in four years when you need to dust off your Necrolord for that last mount. Alright, I think that about does it for upkeep. There's more tiny little things, of course, but these were the topics I felt were most glaring and would certainly affect all of you, no matter what your plans are. And there we have it! I beg you to like and comment on this video, as doing both kicks the YouTube algorithm into high gear and gets my videos recommended more. Being totally honest with you, I want to make this my full-time job, so your support means I can keep bringing you Coffee Field content. As always, thank you so much for watching, and remember, it's never too latte.